How many galaxies are there in the observable universe? It's a question we can't yet answer with any precision, but we can make an estimate. A study carried out by the University of Nottingham in 2020 has revealed that there are many more galaxies than we thought. Just a few years ago, scientists estimated the number of galaxies in the universe at 200 billion. But images from the Hubble telescope and data collected by ground-based observatories have shown us that in reality, there are 10 times that number, or 2,000 billion galaxies. While 90% of galaxies have yet to be studied, astronomers have been able to identify groups of galaxies, such as the local group, to which the Milky Way belongs. The local group itself is part of the Virgo supercluster, an immense cluster of galaxies. At the center of the Virgo supercluster lies the Virgo cluster. Located at the heart of the Virgo constellation, the Virgo cluster has fascinated scientists since its discovery by French astronomer Charles Messier in 1781. It is thought to contain up to 2,000 galaxies, 90% of which are dwarf galaxies. That's 50 times more galaxies than the local group. The Virgo cluster is the largest grouping of galaxies in the nearby universe. For this reason, it is of particular interest to astronomers who are seeking to count all the galaxies in the observable universe. We're off to discover this group of galaxies close to our own, located at the center of the Virgo supercluster. Dear Traveler, welcome. Today we're off to explore the heart of the Virgo cluster. We'll start by exploring the Virgo constellation before moving closer to the Virgo cluster. You'll discover how this cluster of galaxies was discovered how it probably formed, and what its structure and composition are. We'll then enter the center of the Virgo cluster to explore its most remarkable galaxies one by one, as well as the great diversity of stars this group of galaxies harbors. We'll round off this journey with some of the strange objects that have been discovered in the Virgo cluster and still intrigue scientists. But before you set off on your next adventure, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing. Thank you, and fasten your seatbelt for immediate takeoff. To reach the Virgo cluster, we'll need around 65 million years, traveling at the speed of light. This gives us plenty of time to get acquainted with this group of galaxies close to our local group. The Virgo cluster is a massive cluster of galaxies at the center of the Virgo supercluster. It contains between 1,300 and 2,000 galaxies, 90% of which are dwarf galaxies. Its diameter is 15 million light years, which means that to travel through this group of galaxies would take us 15 million years at the speed of light. That's not much more than the local group, whose diameter is 10 million light years. And yet, the Virgo cluster contains 50 times as many galaxies. Many of the galaxies in the Virgo cluster can be seen through a small telescope from Earth. For example, M87, the best known galaxy in the Virgo cluster, can be located in the spring sky with a small telescope. 
Of course, you won't be able to see details like its supermassive black hole, but you will be able to see a small cottony patch that corresponds to this galaxy. It's in the constellation Virgo, above the southern horizon. To see it, of course, you'll need to be away from the city, far from any artificial light. Then, with the help of the Big Dipper orientation table, you'll need to locate the star Spica, as well as the stars Porima, Zenaya, and Vindemiatrix. M87 is one of the three main galaxies in the Virgo cluster. In fact, this cluster of galaxies is organized around three main subclusters. These subclusters are centered around the galaxies M87, M86, and M49. The main or largest subcluster is the one centered around the giant elliptical galaxy M87. Its mass is around 1,014 solar masses. The Virgo cluster is a mixture of spiral and elliptical galaxies. According to current observations, the spiral galaxies are distributed in an elongated filament that extends from the Milky Way and is four times as long as it is wide. However, these are not the only types of galaxies in the cluster which is hardly surprising, given that there are 2,000 of them. When we arrive at our destination, we'll be taking a closer look at the main galaxies in the Virgo cluster. Of course, we won't be able to observe all the galaxies in this group, but we will review the most remarkable of them. At the moment, we're just over 45 million light years from Earth we're approaching the Virgo constellation. Let's take a moment to observe this constellation. The constellation Virgo is the most extensive of the zodiac's constellations. It's also the second largest constellation in the sky, after the Hydra. In fact, you can observe it from Earth even if it's rather difficult to locate, as its shape is not very evocative, unlike, for example, the constellation of the Great Bear. The constellation Virgo lies between the constellation Leo to the west and the constellation Libra to the east. The most infallible way to find it is to locate the star Spica. This is the brightest star in the constellation Virgo, and the 15th brightest in the sky. With a small telescope, it's easy to spot. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, start by spotting the Big Dipper. Find the handle of the saucepan, then the large arc of a circle, linking the end of the handle to Arcturus in the constellation Dubovier. In the extension of this arc, you'll see the star Spica. The star, Leo Beta in the constellation Leo, Arcturus in the constellation Bouvier, and Spica form a triangle, at the center of which lies Vindemiatrix, or the Virgo Hand. Once you've located the constellation Virgo in the night sky, you'll easily be able to find the Virgo cluster, which can be found to the upper right of the constellation Virgo, to the lower right of the Hare of Bernice, and to the left of the constellation Cygnus. Let's continue our journey through the constellation Virgo. Do you know that this is one of the oldest constellations Yes, it's one of the 48 constellations already identified by Ptolemy. It's one of the 13 constellations of the Zodiac. Greek mythology associated the constellation Virgo with the goddess of justice, Themis, who left Earth disgusted by the rudeness of men and took the form of this constellation once in the sky. 
but it's mainly because it shelters the center of the Virgo supercluster that the constellation De La Vierge is known today. The constellation De La Chevelure de Bernice is also of interest to us today, as it hosts the northern part of the Virgo cluster, i.e. six Messier galaxies. Incidentally, the Virgo cluster is also known as the Coma Virgo cluster. Coma for Chevalier de Bernice and Virgo for Vierge, the two constellations in which the cluster is located. The Hair of Bernice constellation lies between the Lion constellation to the west and the Cattle Dog constellation to the east. It is visible from both hemispheres. It can be recognized by its three stars, Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, which form a right-angled triangle from which hang Bernice's imaginary braids. These braids are formed by the star cluster of the Chevalier de Bernice, or Melot 111, an open cluster containing 45 bright stars with a common movement. The constellation de la Chevalier de Bernice is not so easy to observe, as its three stars are not very bright. In general, we start from the brighter constellation Leo and look for Melot 111, which is visible to the naked eye. We've now almost reached our destination. Now that you know how to locate the Virgo cluster in the night sky, it's time for a little history. The Virgo cluster was discovered in 1781 by French astronomer Charles Messier. Charles Messier was not only an outstanding astronomer, he was also a renowned comet hunter. Today, he is best known for creating the catalog of nebulae and star clusters known as the Messier Catalog. This catalog lists objects of diffuse appearance and was created to help comet hunters avoid confusing these objects with comets. These diffuse objects are in fact galaxies, nebulae, and star clusters, even if we didn't know it at the time. The objects in Messier's catalog are marked with a capital M followed by a number ranging from 1 to 110. If you've been following along, you'll have understood that M87, M86, and M49, the galaxies that form the three main subclusters of the Virgo cluster, are part of this catalog. Charles Messier mapped many of the galaxies in the Virgo cluster including M87, M86, and M49, as well as M58, M59, M60, M61, M84, M85, M88, M89, M90, M91, M98, M99, and M100. Most of the galaxies in the Virgo cluster were discovered between 1770 and 1780 and were initially thought to be nebulae. It wasn't until the 1920s that it became clear that they were galaxies. By the end of the 20th century, photographs had revealed between 1,500 and 2,000 galaxies in the Virgo cluster, between 50 and 70 million light years away. Between 2008 and 2012, the NGVS, Next Generation Virgo Cluster Survey, project was carried out to image the Virgo Cluster and perhaps discover other galaxies. This project mobilized the CFHT's 3.5 meter or 11.5 feet telescope, the Canada-France-Hawaii Telescope and a team of 45 members from universities 
and research institutes in Europe and North America. Because the constellation Virgo is only observed in spring and winter, this project has lasted several years and the results are still being interpreted. But we have no doubt that it will gradually reveal an unsuspected number of new galaxies. The Virgo Cluster lies at the center of the Virgo Supercluster, also known as the Local Supercluster. This name ensures that the Supercluster is not confused with the Virgo Cluster. The Virgo Supercluster also includes the Local Group, home to our own Milky Way Galaxy and the Andromeda Galaxy. The Virgo Supercluster has a diameter of 200 million light-years. Compared with the 15 million light-year diameter of the Virgo Cluster, that's a lot. That means it would take us 200 million years to cover it from top to bottom at the speed of light. In fact, it contains some 10,000 galaxies spread across a hundred or so clusters, of which the Virgo Cluster is one of the largest. The Virgo Cluster is located near the center of the local supercluster, but the local group is close to the edge. It is, however, attracted by the Virgo Cluster and therefore moves closer to the center of the supercluster. The Virgo Supercluster consists of a disk and a halo. The disk contains 60% of the supercluster's luminous galaxies while the halo contains 40% of the remaining elements, notably elongated objects. In fact, astronomers don't know much about its formation history, and yet the Virgo cluster is the closest group of galaxies to our own, and therefore the most closely observed Astronomers' first hypothesis is that the galaxies in this cluster form through a slow accretion process that began 7 billion years ago. Accretion is the formation and growth of an object by the addition and agglomeration of matter on its surface or periphery. According to simulations, dark matter could have strongly interacted with galaxies during the formation process. In fact, this is a clue to its existence. On the other hand, if it didn't exist, we'd have to revise this model too. In any case, this interaction caused the galaxies to adopt a particular trajectory and concentrate in the filaments. The filaments then move towards the gas halos of the Virgo cluster. Simulations have also shown that the merger rate of the Virgo cluster has been rather quiet over the 7 billion years of its galaxy's formation compared to other clusters of this mass. A relatively recent study, published in 2017, by M. Olchansky and J. G. Source shows that the Virgo cluster halos have had only one merger in the last 4 billion years the main halo, on the other hand, is thought to have formed only recently and to have merged within the last billion years. The Virgo cluster would therefore have had a fairly quiet history, formed from quiet, distinct groups of galaxies. And if it did experience a period of massive merging, it was in the early ages of its life, not more recently. So not much more is known about the Virgo Cluster's formation model, but scientists are continuing to study it to unravel the mysteries of galaxy evolution within clusters. Today, numerous numerical simulations are carried out and tested, models are calibrated, and theories are verified or invalidated. We also use what we observe and what we know about the Virgo Cluster 
to build larger scale simulations of the local universe. What does the Virgo cluster look like today? As we saw at the start of our journey, the Virgo cluster is an aggregate of at least three distinct subclusters, M87, M86, and M49. All three are giant elliptical galaxies. Some researchers add to this structure a fourth subcluster, centered on the elliptical galaxy M60, and a subgroup of interstellar dust clouds centered on the spiral galaxy NGC 4216. As a reminder, interstellar dust is the main component of cosmic dust in space. It fills the interstellar medium, i.e. the matter that occupies the space between stars. M87, or Virgo A, is the dominant subcluster, with a mass two times that of our own Milky Way galaxy. It contains spiral galaxies, elliptical galaxies, lenticular galaxies, etc. The other two subclusters are less massive, but the three subclusters appear to be merging into a single, larger cluster. Surrounding the three subclusters are smaller galaxy clouds, mainly composed of spiral galaxies. These clouds of galaxies are approaching the center of the Virgo cluster. There are also other, more isolated galaxies and groups of galaxies that are attracted by the cluster's gravity and will in the future merge with it. This structure suggests to astronomers that the Virgo cluster is a more or less young cluster that is still in the process of forming. Let's take a closer look at the intra-cluster environment of the Virgo cluster. Let's start by recalling what the intra-cluster medium is. It's the plasma at the center of galaxies, heated to between 10 and 100 million degrees Celsius. 18 and 180 million degrees Fahrenheit. This high temperature is due to the energy released by the formation of galaxy clusters. The plasma of the Virgo cluster's intracluster medium has a temperature of around 30 million degrees Celsius or 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit and emits X-rays this is where you'll find stars that aren't located in a galaxy, around 10% of the stars in the Virgo cluster. These stars are known as intergalactic stars. There are also isolated planetary nebulae, which may have been expelled from their home galaxy by interactions with other galaxies. The intracluster medium also contains globular clusters, dense star clusters, and at least one star-forming region. Several HII regions have in fact been identified. These are regions of ionized hydrogen and ionization being caused by the proximity of one or more very hot stars. These regions are a sign of active star formation. As we approach the center of the Virgo cluster, the number of star-forming galaxies diminishes and we find galaxies in the extinction phase instead. The intracluster medium is rich in iron, which may have been ejected by the cluster's galaxies. Intracluster gases could interact with quasars the most luminous entities in the universe. Quasar means source of quasi-stellar radiation. They are supermassive black holes at the center of an extremely luminous region. In the Virgo cluster, you can see that the galaxies are grouped together in filaments. Why this strange shape? As we now know, Galaxies have different morphologies, 
gas contents, and star formation rates, depending on the environment in which they are found. The Virgo cluster is a dense environment, leading galaxies to gather into filaments before falling into the center of the cluster. IRAM's 30-meter or 100-foot telescope has observed over 245 galaxies in these filaments. The telescope is operated by Europe's leading center for millimeter wave radio astronomy. It is located at Pico Valleta in Spain's Sierra Nevada, more than 2,800 meters or 9,200 feet above sea level. It is the most sensitive single antenna telescope in the world. Its presence has enabled astronomers to discover and observe numerous galaxies, as well as the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. The telescope has also enabled us to discover that cosmic filaments extend over a length of around 97.8 million light years. This particular filament structure is one of the main driving forces behind the transformation of galaxies. We'll now look at the composition of the Virgo cluster. This cluster of galaxies is quite complex. Its galaxy population is rather young, with numerous substructures, and dominated by early type dwarf galaxies. The galaxies in the Virgo cluster are different from early type galaxies and display characteristics more akin to late type galaxies. The cluster of galaxies is actively growing and its observation could help scientists better understand the history of galaxies and their accumulation in clusters. Indeed, the study of the Virgo cluster has given astronomers some clues as to how galaxies are formed and how their environment influences their development. According to a study led by Christoph Engler, groups of galaxies have passed in front of the Virgo cluster's gravitational center, greatly altering the galaxy's properties. The galaxies passed within 3.75 million light years of the center, which is relatively close from the universe's point of view, greatly affecting their characteristics. We'll be coming back to the different types of galaxies to be found in the Virgo cluster later on in this journey. For now, let's take a look at the chemical composition of this nearby cluster of galaxies. Several teams of researchers have studied the heavy element composition of the Virgo cluster. According to a 2015 study by S.W. Allen and colleagues, the Virgo cluster is rich in elements such as magnesium, silicon, and sulfur. Supernovas are thought to have enriched galaxy clusters with metals, particularly during the peak of star-forming activity. All elements heavier than hydrogen were thus produced by supernova explosions. As a reminder, a supernova is the cataclysmic explosion of a star. For a moment, it can shine brighter than an entire galaxy of a hundred billion stars. Supernovas are fascinating phenomena. There are two types of supernova, type 1A, or thermonuclear supernovas, and type 2, or core collapse supernovas. A core collapse supernova is caused by the explosion of a massive star, eight solar masses or more. This explosion is brighter than all the stars in our galaxy combined, the supernova and its debris release enormous amounts of energy in the form of stellar winds. It produces mainly light metals such as oxygen, silicate, sulfur. Type 1A supernovas are different. 
No debris remains since all the elements produced will enrich the interstellar medium. These supernovas tend to release heavy elements, such as iron and nickel. The elements present in a cluster therefore depend largely on the number and type of supernovas that have occurred there. In the case of the Virgo cluster, type II supernovae have greatly enriched the environment in heavy elements. Now that you've understood how the Virgo cluster was formed, its structure and composition, let's explore the galaxies that make up this cluster in more detail. While 70% of the bright galaxies in the Virgo cluster are spiral galaxies, the largest galaxies in the cluster are elliptical galaxies, confirming the American bottom-up theory. According to this theory, Ancient galaxies were originally spiral galaxies, but were transformed over time into giant ellipticals. The center of the Virgo cluster is occupied by the giant elliptical galaxy M87, or NGC 4486. To give you an idea of its immensity, you should know that M87 hosts at its center a black hole with a mass several million times that of the Sun. Although the subcluster centered on M87 is dominant, you can see that the Virgo cluster is an aggregate of three subclusters, the other two being centered around M86 and M49. The Virgo cluster includes another bright elliptical galaxy called M84 or NGC 4374. You can see that the three subclusters are approaching the center of the cluster. They are surrounded by other isolated galaxies and galaxy groups, which will also merge with the cluster center due to its gravity. Before exploring the giant elliptical galaxies of the Virgo Cluster, let's take a look at the different types of galaxies that make up the Virgo Cluster. The Virgo Cluster has a high proportion of barred spiral galaxies. This proportion is much higher than in other clusters, although astronomers can't really explain why. The Virgo Cluster also features a large number of elliptical galaxies. As we saw with the American bottom-up theory, elliptical galaxies are considered the final stage in galaxy evolution. Indeed, the elliptical type is thought to arise from collisions and interactions between several galaxies, which are frequent in clusters like Virgo. Elliptical dwarf galaxies are the most common type of galaxy in the universe, along with spheroidal dwarf galaxies. They are often satellites of giant galaxies, or found in galaxy clusters. The Virgo cluster is also home to low surface brightness galaxies, or LSBs. These are diffuse galaxies with a surface brightness that to a terrestrial observer is less than one magnitude lower than that of the surrounding night sky. Most low surface brightness galaxies are dwarf galaxies. Their small size and low brightness meant they were virtually unnoticed in early galaxy research. But it is now thought that they could play an important role in the processes of galaxy formation and evolution. In the Virgo cluster, red LSBs are found in greater numbers. Astronomers are intrigued by these LSBs because they do not agree with what models would predict. In fact, their red color is linked to an intermittent star formation history that is not linear and smooth as predicted by the models. Its stars that affect galaxy colors 
and in the case of these red galaxies, the color would have been caused by small bursts in star formation. So does this mean that star formation is affected by local disturbances and density waves? A new idea of great interest to scientists. In the center of the cluster, there are more ultra-diffuse UDG galaxies than diffuse galaxies. These are galaxies with the size of giant galaxies, but the luminosity of dwarf galaxies. We've seen that the Virgo cluster includes spiral galaxies, dwarf and giant elliptical galaxies, low surface brightness galaxies, and ultra-diffuse galaxies. That's a lot of galaxies, and yet we haven't even come close to completing our tour of the types of galaxies present in the Virgo cluster. In 2010, a study by D. Karachentsev and O. Nasanova revealed the existence of blue-shifted galaxies in the Virgo cluster, i.e., galaxies approaching the Milky Way. An intriguing discovery. The Virgo cluster has such a high mass that it's unlikely there's a group of galaxies moving away from it. But it would be possible if the group of galaxies orbited the center of the Virgo cluster. These galaxies would therefore not be moving towards us, but merely continuing their orbit around the center of the cluster. In 2012, Thanks to the Hubble telescope, scientists discovered M60-UCD1, which was to become the first ultra-compact dwarf galaxy observed. It has a diameter of just 150 light years, which may seem like a lot to you, but it's still not much compared with the Milky Way's 100,000 light year diameter yet it's 200 million times the mass of the Sun, and 15,000 times denser than the galactic region we're in. Its stars are 25 times closer together than the Sun is to its neighbors. Discovered in the 20th century, the ultra-compact dwarf galaxy was hardly considered a galaxy at first. It was more commonly referred to as a stellar cluster. But it was discovered that M60-UCD1 has a powerful X-ray source at its center, which may originate either from a giant black hole, as found in the nuclei of most galaxies, or from an X-ray binary, a pairing of a neutron star and a normal star. Needless to say, the first hypothesis was the most likely. M60-UCD1 would therefore have been an ordinary galaxy which came under the gravitational influence of a neighboring galaxy and gradually lost its stars until all that remained was its ultra-dense core with its black hole. This phenomenon would have taken place billions of years ago, as astronomers are currently unable to find any trace of it. If there is indeed a black hole at the heart of M60-UCD1, and if it is indeed a galaxy, then it holds the record for the densest galaxy ever observed. Another discovery was made in 2015 concerning the galaxies of the Virgo cluster. Astrophysicist Lori Raguccini and her team published a paper about lenticular galaxies in the Virgo cluster. Lenticular galaxies are disk galaxies without distinct spiral arms, and are probably the transitional stage between elliptical and spiral galaxies. They often contain large amounts of dust, but little star formation. Finally, the Virgo cluster contains a large number of isolated galaxies. These early type galaxies, often elliptical or lenticular, are located on the periphery of the cluster. 
the elliptical galaxies are similar to those at the heart of the cluster, but observations by the Chandra Space Telescope have shown that the isolated, elliptical galaxies may be the remnants of a group of galaxies that have merged. As for the isolated, lenticular galaxies, they seem to have come from elsewhere. The process that is most likely responsible for the formation of these very isolated, lenticular galaxies only occurs in rich groups and clusters, so they would certainly come from a region rich in gas and massive galaxies. However, we can't be sure of anything, and these very isolated galaxies on the periphery of the Virgo cluster are still a mystery to astronomers. Let's get to the heat of the matter and discover the main galaxies of the Virgo cluster. We've arrived at our destination, some 50 million light years from Earth. Look closely at the center of the Virgo cluster. You can see three giant elliptical galaxies slightly wider than our own galaxy. These are M87, M86, and M84. You can also see M49, the brightest galaxy in the Virgo cluster, but far from the center. We'll begin our journey into the galaxies of the Virgo cluster by exploring the cluster's best-known giant elliptical galaxy, M87, also known as Messier 87 or Virgo A. Located around 53 million light-years from us, M87 is the best-known galaxy in the Virgo cluster for the simple reason that it is the largest known galaxy in the cluster. And indeed, it's gigantic as you can see. This elliptical galaxy has a diameter of 120,000 light years. It contains over 2,000 billion stars, and its supermassive black hole, M87, is on the order of 6.5 billion solar masses. Yes, you heard me right. We're talking billions. That's huge compared with Sagittarius A, the Milky Way's black hole, which has a mass of 4 million solar masses. M87's supermassive black hole is so monstrous that together with the dark matter halo, it accounts for five-sixths of the galaxy's total mass. M87 has more than 10,000 globular clusters. By comparison, our own galaxy has just 200. It's not just because it's gigantic that M87 is such a hot topic of conversation. Discovered in 1779 by German astronomer Johann Gottfried Kohler, it was added to the Messier catalog by Charles Messier in 1781. It is one of the brightest galaxies in the Virgo cluster, with a magnitude of 9.6. What's more, its supermassive black hole produces a plasma jet that extends over a length of 5,000 light years. It is therefore a powerful radio source. The M87 black hole is located in its active center and thus forms part of the active core of the M87 galaxy. Remember that an active galaxy is home to an active nucleus whose luminosity is far more intense than average in a particular region of the electromagnetic spectrum, such as radio waves, infrared, ultraviolet, X-rays. The radiation from the active nucleus comes from accretion by the galaxy's central black hole. These astonishing objects are the most luminous continuous sources of electromagnetic radiation in the universe. The subcluster formed by M87 encompasses numerous galaxies, which we will explore 
before visiting the other two main subclusters of the Virgo cluster. Let's start with the Messier 98 galaxy, more commonly known as M98 or NGC 4192. Although, Armenian astronomer Abraham Matassian classifies it as belonging to the M86 subcluster, which we'll explore later. This intermediate spiral galaxy is thought to belong to the subcluster formed by M87. It is located some 50 million light years from us in the constellation of Bernice's hair. French astronomer Pierre McCain discovered it in March 1781, along with neighboring galaxies M99 and M100. Its magnitude of 10.1 makes it very difficult to observe. In fact, it's one of the most difficult objects in Messier's catalog to observe. However, astronomers have still managed to obtain a magnificent image of it, thanks to ESO's NTT, a telescope inaugurated in 1989, and at the time, the first to feature adaptive optics. Astonishingly, Messier 98 is very rich in young stars, it is thought to contain a thousand billion of them. Scientists believe that an interaction with M99 750 million years ago somehow ignited these stars. M99 or NGC 4254 is what is known as a grand style spiral galaxy, i.e. a spiral galaxy with well-defined spiral arms it has a star formation rate three times higher than other spiral galaxies of a similar type, which could be caused by interactions with other galaxies, as in the case of M98. In any case, this galaxy is of interest to scientists, as unexplained phenomena have been observed here. The star PTF 10FQS, for example, behaves strangely. This star was discovered by the Palomar Transient Factory, PTF Astronomical Survey, which looks for sudden changes in brightness, such as those produced by a variable star or supernova. The PTF 10FQS star had an intermediate brightness between that of a nova and that of a supernova. But over the course of 68 days, it slowly diminished in magnitude, a fact that remains unexplained by scientists. Like M98, astronomers are not unanimous as to whether M99 belongs to the M97 subcluster. Messier 100, also discovered in 1781, along with M98 and M99, is also a grand style spiral galaxy located in the constellation of the Chevalier de Bernice, 56 million light years from us. It is also known as M100 and NGC 4321. Its diameter is around 120,000 light years. Its magnitude of 9.4 is quite low. So to observe the spiral arms of this galaxy from Earth, it's necessary to take a long exposure photo with a telescope of at least 200 millimeters. Observation is easier with a 400 millimeter telescope. In the constellation of Bernice's hair, you can also observe M85, the northernmost galaxy in the Virgo cluster, also discovered by Pierre McCain. It is thought to be an elliptical galaxy, although it has long been classified as a lenticular galaxy. In the constellation de la Virge, you can observe the spiral galaxy NGC 4388, discovered 
in 1784 by the German-British astronomer William Herschel. What makes it special? It expels clouds of gas more than 100,000 light-years across. Classified as an active galaxy, NGC 4388 is thought to have ejected gas as it passed through the intergalactic medium of the Virgo cluster. Or it could have gravitationally destroyed a smaller galaxy, leaving only these dust clouds. Still in the constellation Virgo, the Galaxy of the Eyes is formed by NGC 4435 and NGC 4438, also known as ARP 120. This pair of galaxies, photographed by ESO's Very Large Telescope in the Andes Mountains, is located around 52 million light years from us. Why are we talking about Virgo's eyes? Because, seen through a medium sized telescope, the galaxy cores, two white ovals, look like a pair of shining eyes. NGC 4438 is the larger of the two. Once in a spiral galaxy, it has been distorted by collisions with other galaxies. In fact, Deformations have been observed in the spiral arms of both galaxies, leading scientists to speculate that they may have collided several million years ago. After all, the two galaxies are only 100,000 light years apart, which is a very small distance on the scale of the universe. Although they look very similar, NGC 4438 and NGC 4435 are very different. In the former, some of the young stars and gas have been extracted from the galaxy and are now scattered along a long ribbon. In contrast, NGC 4435 is compact and appears to be devoid of gas and dust. Apart from a loss of mass, it doesn't seem to have been affected as much as NGC 4438 by the collision between the two galaxies. Some scientists believe that the damage to NGC 4438 may also have been caused by a collision with M86, the second main giant elliptical galaxy in the Virgo cluster. It's this galaxy that we'll be looking at next. Discovered by German astronomer Johann Gottfried Kohler in 1779, this elliptical galaxy was observed the same year by Charles Messier and recorded in Messier's catalog as M86. Its distinctive feature is a blue shift. In other words, it's getting closer to us and at great speed. The radial velocity of Messier 86 has been estimated at 224 kilometers per second, or 140 miles per second, according to the NED database. Of all the galaxies in Messier's catalog, it is the second fastest approaching the Milky Way, after M90. Several gas filaments link it to NGC 4438, showing that the two galaxies are in a gravitational interaction. This interaction appears to be pulling matter away from M86. Another special feature of M86 is its large number of globular clusters, estimated at around 3,000. These globular clusters are concentrated in its halo, where there are also ribbons of stars that could be the remnants of dwarf galaxies that were absorbed by M86. M86 is one of eight galaxies in the Markarian chain. The galaxies of the Markarian chain are arranged in a circular arc and share a common motion. The name of this unusual object comes from the Armenian astronomer Benjamin Markarian, who discovered 
that these galaxies had a common motion. The Markarian chain is located at the center of the Virgo cluster. The galaxies that make up the Markarian chain are M84, M86, the lenticular galaxies NGC 4477, NGC 4461, NGC 4438, and NGC 4435, and the elliptical galaxies NGC 4473 and NGC 4458. M84, or NGC 4374, is a very luminous lenticular galaxy in the constellation Virgo. It marks the beginning of the Markarian chain. It is similar and less luminous than its neighbor M87, but otherwise very similar. Very rich in globular clusters, it also has a center that emits two plasma jets observable in radio radiation. The supermassive black hole occupying the galaxy's center and emitting these jets of matter is said to have a mass of 1.5 billion solar masses. M84 is sometimes considered part of the M49 group, the elliptical galaxy that forms the third main subcluster of the Virgo cluster, which we'll discover later in our journey. Like M87, M86 forms a subcluster made up of numerous other galaxies. The M86 group was defined by Armenian astronomer Abraham Matassian. The astronomer counted at least 22 galaxies in this group, located in the constellations Virgo and Bernice's Hare. But his list has since been slightly revised. In the M86 group, you can observe a pair formed by two galaxies, M90 and IC3583. M90, or NGC4569, is an intermediate spiral galaxy, i.e., halfway between a regular spiral galaxy and a barred spiral galaxy. It is one of the largest spiral galaxies in the Virgo cluster. It was discovered by Charles Messier in 1781. It has a blue shift and is therefore very close to the Milky Way. What's astonishing is the speed at which it is approaching us, 235 kilometers per second, according to the NED. Scientists have estimated that it is moving at 1500 kilometers per second within the Virgo cluster and may even be escaping the cluster's gravity. Some scientists believe it may already have left the Virgo cluster by now. It's the fastest approaching galaxy, ahead of even M86. Another special feature of M90 is its tightly wound spiral arms, where there appears to be no star-forming activity left. According to some researchers, M90 is evolving into a lenticular galaxy. M90 was added by American astronomer Halton C. Arp in his Atlas of Peculiar Galaxies, as it is a spiral galaxy with a high surface brightness companion. This companion is IC3583, a small, irregular, Magellanic galaxy. It has a magnitude of 13.3 and a surface brightness of 14.26, making it a low surface brightness galaxy. Their radial velocities are different, but they probably form a pair of galaxies since they are located at similar distances. M89 is also part of the M86 group. This almost perfectly circular elliptical galaxy is also known as NGC 4552. It is accompanied by a jet-like structure 
extending over some 100,000 light years, which could be a smaller satellite galaxy being disintegrated by tidal forces. The M86 group also includes several spiral galaxies, such as NGC 4208, NGC 4216, NGC 4396, and NGC 4419. According to Abraham Matassian, the galaxy NGC 4438, one of the two eyes of Virgo, is also part of the M86 group. We now turn to the third elliptical galaxy forming a subcluster within the Virgo cluster, M49, or Messier 49, also known as NGC 4472. It is located around 55 million light years away and has a diameter of almost 160,000 light years. It is therefore smaller than the giant M87. M49 is located far from the center of the Virgo cluster, but it is the brightest galaxy in the cluster, with a magnitude of 8.4 and a surface brightness of 12.8. It was therefore the first galaxy in the Virgo cluster to be discovered. It is thought to contain almost 200 billion stars. Like most elliptical galaxies, it contains mostly old stars. The last period of star formation took place around 6 billion years ago, before the birth of the Sun. Overall, its stars are older and redder than the Sun. M49 also contains a large number of globular clusters, around 6300, which is quite a lot compared with the 200 or so globular clusters in the Milky Way. The average age of these globular clusters is 10 billion years. A supermassive black hole of around 565 million solar masses occupies the center of the galaxy. M49 is a region of low ionization nuclear emission, or liner with a bilateral radio jet whose emissions are weaker than normal. M49 interacts gravitationally with the irregular dwarf galaxy UGC 7636. This interaction is catalogued as ARP-134. The M49 group includes over 120 galaxies in the Virgo and Bernice constellations it is not clear which galaxies belong to this group as some are approaching the Milky Way while others are moving away from it, towards the center of the Virgo cluster. A 1993 article by astronomer A.M. Garcia listed 127 such galaxies, including several in Messier's catalog. M58 is one of them. This galaxy is one of four barred spiral galaxies in Messier's catalog, along with M91, M95, and M109, which are not part of the M49 group. But it's not always classified as a barred spiral galaxy. It was also one of the first spiral galaxies to be recognized as such, and one of the brightest galaxies in the Virgo cluster. Also in the M49 group, M60 is one of the largest elliptical galaxies in the Virgo cluster. Some scientists believe it to be a fourth subcluster, rather than just a member of the M49 group. Messier described it as being slightly more apparent than the previous two, M50 and M59. According to Hubble telescope observations, a massive central object of around 2 billion solar masses lies at the heart of M60. M60 is also the orbit 
of the ultra-compact dwarf galaxy, M60-UCD1, which we observed a few moments ago. M88, or NGC 4501, is another notable galaxy, belonging to the M49 group. It was described by Messier as a starless nebula with one of the faintest light levels. Like M58, which it resembles according to Messier, it was one of the first spiral galaxies to be recognized as such. One of its particularities is that it has an impressive outgoing velocity of over 2200 kilometers per second or 1370 miles per second. There's also talk of the M88 group with at least 44 galaxies. Other members of the M49 group include M91, described as a missing galaxy in the Messier catalog, because the position reported by the astronomer was wrong. Let's continue our exploration of the most notable galaxies in the Virgo cluster. To the south of the cluster, you can observe M104, or NGC 4594, nicknamed the Sombrero Nebula. This spiral galaxy is easy to identify because of its unusual appearance. Seen in profile, it has a dark band running across it, giving it the appearance of a sombrero, hence its name. The dark band you can see is in fact a symmetrical disk that surrounds the bulge of the galaxy, containing most of the neutral hydrogen and dust. You can see it very low on the horizon with a small 200 millimeter telescope, thanks to the contrast formed by this black band. M104's nucleus is a strong source of synchrotron radiation in the X-ray and radio wave domains Among the Virgo Cluster's notable galaxies is NGC 4666, an intermediate spiral galaxy discovered in 1784 and described as a starburst galaxy. A starburst galaxy is a galaxy with an exceptionally high rate of star formation compared with the average rate observed in other galaxies these high rates are thought to be the result of a collision or interaction with one or more nearby galaxies. These bursts are temporary. In the case of NGC 4666, this intense star-forming activity is thought to be the result of interaction with neighboring galaxies, notably NGC 4668 and NGC 4632, which together form a trio of galaxies. NGC 4452 is also an interesting galaxy to observe as it presents itself to us from the edge. It's a lenticular galaxy, or so scientists assume. Indeed, it appears very thin, making it difficult to determine its shape with any certainty. Astronomers have deduced that it's a lenticular galaxy because it doesn't appear to have a dust line. But it could also be an anemic galaxy. Anemic galaxies are spiral galaxies with low contrast between the disk and the spiral arms. They are in fact an intermediate form between the star-forming, gas-rich spiral galaxy and the inactive, gas-poor lenticular galaxy. We've now completed our exploration of the most remarkable galaxies in the Virgo cluster. Of course, you didn't get to see all the galaxies in this cluster, which nevertheless contains between 1300 and 2000. Let's take a closer look at the stellar population of the Virgo cluster. As you can see, the majority of galaxies in the Virgo Cluster are elliptical. The Virgo Cluster therefore contains many population 2 stars, which are very old 
metal poor stars that formed before the galactic disk 11 to 13 billion years ago. They are found in the halo of galaxies, but the Virgo cluster also includes younger galaxies, such as spiral galaxies, in which we find so-called Population 1 stars. Population 1 stars are less than 10 billion years old and therefore considered young. They are rich in metals, i.e. elements other than hydrogen and helium. They are commonly found in the arms of spiral galaxies, but also in globular clusters and galaxy halos. They are formed from matter ejected from supernova explosions. As opposed to Population 1 or Population 2 stars, Population 3 stars are thought to be even older. They are thought to have formed just after the Big Bang and to be made entirely of hydrogen and helium. For the moment, however, these stars have only been modeled none have yet been observed. The Virgo cluster contains over 692 globular clusters, all clustered around M87, the cluster's main galaxy. When we say around, we mean at a distance of around 2.74 million light-years, the majority of globular clusters observed are composed of stars rich in heavy elements, i.e. elements that are neither hydrogen nor helium, and have a high metallicity. They are therefore very old. But there are also blue globular clusters near the active center of M87, which are hotter and therefore younger. Stellar systems with blue stars and high metallicity have also been spotted in the Virgo cluster. They were probably formed from gas from nearby galaxies, from which they were separated by the effect of dynamic pressure. But this is only a hypothesis at present, which may explain the strange fact that these stellar systems are so far away from any source of gas. An astronomical survey carried out with the Schmidt-Samuel Ocean Telescope at the Mount Palomar Observatory has counted 24,353 massive stars in the Virgo cluster. These supergiants are thought to have formed around 60 million years ago. They have been classified into three groups, blue supergiants, yellow supergiants, and red supergiants. Blue supergiants tend to be distributed around the periphery of the cluster, and red supergiants near the center. An isolated blue supergiant has been spotted in the tidal tail of irregular dwarf galaxy IC3418. A tidal tail is a long formation of gas and stars that have emerged from an interacting galaxy under the influence of the galactic tidal force. Sometimes tidal tails contain a large proportion of a galaxy's matter. Thanks to observations of early type galaxies by the Chandra and Hubble telescopes, scientists have also been able to highlight low mass X-ray binaries, mostly located in globular clusters these stars are binary stars, i.e., a system composed of two stars orbiting around a common center of gravity. Their distinctive feature is that they radiate in the X-ray range. They are found in the most massive globular clusters, which are old enough to cause them to form. Moreover, Globular clusters harbor more and more black holes and neutron stars as they grow, and an X-ray binary usually consists of one of these two objects associated with a lower mass star. The stellar population of the Virgo cluster also includes magnetars. 
These are neutron stars with extremely high magnetic fields. One supernova in ten gives rise to a magnetar. What is the origin of this intense magnetic field, and why do only a few supernovas create magnetars? While scientists' understanding of magnetars is not yet complete, it would seem that this magnetic field is linked to the dynamo effect applied to neutron stars. But for this to happen, the neutron stars have to be rotating fast enough. The dynamo effect is the self-generated magnetic field of a body moving in a weak or even zero magnetic field. The last type of star to be spotted in the Virgo cluster is the Cepheid variable star. These are giant or supergiant yellow stars, four to fifteen times more massive than the Sun, and one hundred to thirty thousand times more luminous. The Pole Star was a Cepheid, although in 1994 it was discovered that its brightness had become stable. The Virgo cluster is home to a large population of Cepheid stars. Even though we've explored galaxies and stars, the Virgo cluster hasn't yet revealed all its secrets. Strange or remarkable objects which are neither stars nor galaxies have been discovered in this cluster. These include Virgo H121, a galaxy-sized halo of dark matter containing no visible stars. This strange object was discovered using a radio telescope, because it is invisible. Because Virgo H121 is the first dark matter halo to contain no stars, and the one with the highest percentage of dark matter, scientists believe it could confirm the dark matter theory. This theory states that dark matter accumulates in galaxies, and even galaxy clusters just like ordinary matter, or luminous matter if you prefer. Virgo H121 has a mass of around 100 million solar masses, and less than one thousandth of its mass is hydrogen. It is known to contain very little ordinary matter, which is composed of baryons. It could be a very large cloud of diffuse hydrogen. This would explain why it appears to contain no stars at all. According to cosmological models, dark matter is five times more abundant than ordinary matter. The discovery of this first dark galaxy is therefore a huge step forward for astronomers. Let's continue our exploration of the Virgo Cluster's remarkable objects and phenomena. On May 18, 2017, the first fast radio burst was detected in the cluster. This phenomenon is extremely rare. It's a radio wave burst that lasts just a few milliseconds. This fast radio burst has been named FRB 180417. It was observed for less than a second. It's likely that this phenomenon occurred behind the Virgo cluster, but scientists don't know what its source is. We'll conclude this journey with a look at the group of young blue stars known as SECC01. This group is located at an estimated distance of between 48 and 72 million light years from us. It was first discovered by Charles Messier, but recent observations by the Hubble Telescope and ESO's VLT instruments in Chile have intrigued scientists. In fact, the images show the existence of indefinable blue objects that are potentially associated with galaxies in the Virgo Cluster, but which have moved away from it 
by up to 300,000 light years. These objects have never before seen characteristics. The young stars are very blue, very young, rich in metals and bathed in clouds containing very little atomic hydrogen. The result is structures the size of dwarf galaxies. The formation of these stars is recent, since only blue stars have been detected, not yellow or red ones. But given their high metallicity, we'd expect them to have formed from gas that evolved with several generations of stars. There should, therefore, be red and yellow dwarfs, as in the Milky Way. It is this paradox that intrigues astrophysicists. Several theories have been put forward to explain this strange phenomenon. The first is that the tidal forces of a large galaxy have pulled gas from another galaxy. The second, a galaxy collided rapidly with a mass of hot plasma, and the shock tore a mass of gas from this galaxy. This is known as the dynamic pressure stripping effect. This hypothesis would be more likely, because for the objects observed to be so isolated, there must have been rapid motion. We've reached the end of our journey into the heart of the Virgo Cluster. It's a dizzying journey when you consider that all the lights in the Virgo Cluster that we see today were emitted around 50 million years ago, shortly after the disappearance of the dinosaurs. But it's also, for astronomers and scientists, a fascinating journey that is enabling us to better understand everything that's going on in the universe beyond the Milky Way, to refine models and develop new theories. The 2,000 odd galaxies in the Virgo cluster are invaluable sources of information for understanding the formation and evolution, not only of galaxies, but also of stars and the various stellar systems in the universe. <laughs>